Hello, and welcome to another session on using the new Blender for video editing. Today we're going to talk about animations, what they are, and how you can create your own simple animations inside of Blender's video sequence editor. To start off, what is an animation? So in terms of what we're doing here, it's taking something inside of your scene and changing it over time, whether that's the position of one of your video strips, maybe the, the size of it, you know, the, the zoom, the scale, uh, rotation, or the color or opacity of something. So let's start simple with a basic fade to black. So if I scrub here through the uh, scene I have set up here, you can see it's 10 seconds worth of the Agent 327 video. Now let's say at this point here, I wanted at the eight second mark, all the way through to the end at the 10 second mark, I wanted to start doing a fade to black. So how do we do that? The way to do it is all through something called a keyframe. So a keyframe is a specific point in time um, where you establish the value of something, uh, an attribute. Uh, all right, so with our example of doing a fade to black from the eight second mark all the way to the 10 second mark, we have basically four pieces of information right there, right? We have the start time, the eight seconds, that is the frame at which point we will start this animation. And we know we want it to start in its current state. And for doing things like fade to black, we use this property called opacity. So that's two things. The other two things is the finish point. So at the end of the 10 seconds, this is the point where the animation will finish. And at that point, we're gonna drop the opacity down to zero. So that's all we really need to get started besides the fact of how do you actually do that? Uh, but before I do that, let me just click and drag left and right along the opacity so you can see what was, is gonna happen. Okay, so as I bring it all the way down from one down to zero, it basically fades out. Now I had said this is a fade to black, but I have this purple color strip underneath the video strip. So it's actually more like a fade to purple, but the same idea. Okay, so let's bring that back up to one and get started. To create uh, keyframes, it's actually very, very easy to do. There's really only three things. Number one, you have to go to the point in your scene that you want to set a keyframe. So I'm already there, I'm at the A second mark. Uh, step two, make sure for whatever property it is that you are trying to animate, that it is already the value you want set. So in this case, it's opacity, it's already at one, we're ready to go there. The last thing is to actually set the keyframe and there's two ways to do it. One is you right click on the attribute that you want to change and then you can choose insert keyframe. The other option is, well, it's the same thing, but just using the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter I, a much easier thing to do in my opinion. So let's start that. I'm going to click this button. So notice that as soon as I had made that option, now this field is a yellow color. That's Blender's way of telling us that we have a keyframe for the opacity attribute at this point in time. And if I move the time cursor anywhere else that is not on that keyframe, it now shows a green. So that's its way of telling you there are keyframes for this opacity attribute, but not at this specific point in time in your scene. So at this point, we've set our first keyframe. Now I'm just going to jump to the end of the scene, going to where the keyframe is to be set. That's the first step. Second step is to change the value. So I'm going to click in there and type zero and press enter. Um, and notice here now it's an orange color. So I believe this is basically saying, okay, we've, we've changed this value, but you haven't actually set a keyframe yet. So we, this should be the next thing to do. And remember uh, to set a keyframe, we can just press the letter I. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, and now it's the yellow color. So now we have our keyframes. And if you notice over here, something else has changed. Um, inside of the video sequence editor, 
you can see that the color of the video strip itself has changed and you can see now there's this little slope here and that's a nice indication it's a visual way for blender to show us that the opacity is changing over time so we have that set so let's go ahead and i'll just click over here and hit the play button so we can see how that looks there you go that's it so that is how you can easily set some keyframes uh, another thing to know is that there are uh, keyboard shortcuts to jump around when you have a strip selected that has keyframes. And it's the up and down arrow keys. If I push up, then I will go forwards in time to wherever there are keyframes. And if I try to click a, the up arrow again, it'll give a warning, no more keyframes to jump in this direction. I can go backwards by pressing the down arrow key. So down once, and then I try down again, and it'll say no more. And, and again, this is only when you have a strip selected that has keyframes. So if I click on the color strip and I press up or down, it won't let me do anything. Okay, so that was a simple example of how you can set keyframes to get some animation in your video. Uh, but of course, this, is, uh, this was a fade out and it's not something that you would really need to do if what you want is a fade out because you can do that easily from the add menu. You just go to add, fade, and you have a whole bunch of options here. But still a nice introduction to it. Um, before we move on to another example, let me point out a few more things. If I uh, click again to select this strip and I right click here, there are a few other options. So if you had set a keyframe, but then you change your mind, you don't want it anymore, you can go to delete keyframe. Or if you want to wipe keyframes out entirely, for example, if you had copied a strip and you wanted the strip but not with the associated keyframes then you could go here and say clear keyframes okay so that was the basic introduction let's show you something a little bit more interesting so i'm going to switch over to this and show you that what i have in place right now is a simple transition between two strips and uh, you, as you probably know, there are other options. Uh, so if I get rid of this one and I select these and go to add, you can see under transition, we also have um, wipe and the wipe does as it sounds. So it goes, it wipes across and you're not limited to just up or down, uh, which is up or down is controlled by the direction, but you can also choose the angle. It can be going across. So left to right if you want, or maybe even a 45 degrees. Um, so lots of options there already, but let's do something entirely different that you can't get from these built-in uh, features. So I'm going to get rid of this transition and I'll select, I'll select the top strip and we're going to make this thing bounce in. Um, so let me just go ahead and do that so you can see how quick it is to do uh, as long as you know all, all the steps. So we're going to animate both the X and the Y property. So we're going to start with this thing all the way off to the right side. Okay, and I'll set a keyframe right now. And I'm also going to set blend to overdrop so we can see the strips underneath. Uh, now over here I can see the Y, the height of our scene is 358. So because I want it to bounce, that means it has to start up high. So I'm also going to set this to 358. And I'll set a keyframe there. Uh, and then it needs to finish its animation when this strip ends. So at this point, this is when we set it to zero, keyframe and zero, keyframe. So let me just draw a preview box so we can just play that and see what that looks like. So right now that's boring, totally boring, not worth doing. But let's now jump over to the graph editor to make it more fun. So I go into graph editor and I'm gonna stretch this out so we can see more and hit the home button here so I can see what these lines are. So the green line you can see over here it represents the Y, uh, the, the up and down, and then the red line represents X. Uh, and then so I'm going to 
click on this lock button so that doesn't change and then I'll have that selected go to key interpolation and bounce there so now you can even see within the graph editor that it's going to have some kind of bounce effect like that so if I hit the play button this is what it looks like now bounce 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 okay so that's it. Um, this was an introduction to animations, to setting keyframes, uh, and a very quick look into how you can use the graph editor to create more interesting animations. Uh, hope you did like that. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and you know subscribe so you can see more content when it comes. Thanks and bye now.